Hello, it's me. Crazy Rebecca dances with pit bulls. We in a different situation here. So I'm going to try something totally, totally different. Although the hand gestures are, remain the same. <laughs> I have been making these crowns for some of my friends, my little children friends, and I thought I would do a tutorial. And what I am going to try to do is, we're going to sit here because I really need to know how long does it take me to make one of these. That's my first objective. But also, I want to do like video cuts to my table where my camera's sitting in my in its normal position so that I can explain some of the trickier bits. So I don't know if that's going to happen, but that's my plan. We'll see. So this pattern, my cousin posted it on my Facebook timeline. It is from fabartdiy.org. And I went there and I did not get the picture of it because my printer is out of colored ink. So what's the point? But I got the paper. Um, but now when I just went over there and tried it again, it says the site is down. So I'm going to link it down below anyway and try to get y'all your own patterns. But let's begin. You need a size I crochet hook and probably for a kid just some acrylic yarn, worst to weight yarn. Because, you know, mud. Mud and stuff happens. Sticky fingers. Whatever. So I'm doing the child size. So just a matter of a few things different from the adult size. So you chain six. Skip the first chain and single crochet in each chain across. So you'll have five. One, two, three, four, and five. Now it gets very repetitive for a while here. Chain one, turn. Turn your crochet, you single crochet in the first loop, then you single crochet in this back loop of the next three stitches. One, two, three, then you single crochet all the way through the last loop, the last stitch, and repeat. Single crochet in the first one, single crochet in the back loop only of the next three, and I will do the cutaway thing so you can see from the overhead what I'm actually doing right now. Okay, so we're going to do the start thing. Chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Skip this first one and you crochet, single crochet into each loop five times. One, two, 
three, four, five. Chain one, turn. Now you're going to single crochet right here in that first stitch. Now you turn it kind of towards yourself. You see these rows here? You're going to single crochet into the back three times. One, two, three, then you single crochet in the last stitch, chain, turn. I'll do it one more time. Single crochet in the first stitch, then in the next three, you're going in the back loop only. I hope this is perfectly clear, clear as mud. Back to the regular video. <laughs> Did it work? Did it work? We'll find out. <laughs> we're going to find out. Okay, so we're just going to chat while I do this because this takes a while. It's like, you know, everything in crochet is repetitive. But I'm trying to find out how long it actually takes me to do this. So what do you want to talk about? It's snowing again. It's awfully early in the season around here for it to be snowing this much. But today was my usual day off, so no harm, no foul. I am actually starving was going to eat. Dang it. I forgot. I drank my coffee and I forgot to eat. La la la. Connect the dots. I don't know. Well, you put yourself on camera, then you don't know what to talk about. Hello. Nothing exciting has happened. Oh, the government shutdown yesterday affected us because we contract with the federal government and we have to mirror their benefits and eek we ended up having to pay all of our employees holiday pay and got no work done except sh my boss begged for some people to come in and work so yikes I went in so I'll get a comp day later Stretch. This is how you do it. You stretch like this <laughs> to get your yarn. Oh my gosh. And this is where I sit to knit. This is my recliner that I stole from upstairs before the new people came in. I didn't steal it. Bo said I could have whatever I wanted out of there, so... I got this and it's covered by a quilt you can't see it right now a quilt that I have had for probably 30 years I think I found it in the laundromat or I don't know where it came from but I have patched it and patched it and patched it I got it in Indiana in Franklin County I think And, yeah, I just keep adding patches to it. It's heavy as heck. <laughs> it's wool. It's got a lot of wool, like men's suiting and a wool blanket. And 
I used it for, like I would make different swatches knitting and stuff. I used those, I used handkerchiefs, I used buttons, I used embroidered pieces, I used just fabric I liked. So, my kids are always like, oh my gosh, that quilt. And yep. It sat in storage the whole time I lived in Colorado. I'm lucky a mouse didn't chew it up. Once again, stretch your arm out. You got to get a little exercise going here. If I could, I would honestly sit here all day and knit or crochet. I've been watching Catfish, the TV show. Do you know what that is? It's where somebody makes an online profile and a fake one and then lures in other people. So I've never that I know of been catfished but way back in the day like 2001 2000 maybe even nope I'm gonna say 2001 I got played more or less by someone and then ghosted And then they showed up like years later and I'm like, yeah, I, <laughs> I looked at you as a learning experience. And so from then on, I didn't trust anybody, <laughs> but I found my Yahoo music friends and it was a different situation there. still friends with most of those people a lot of those people my friend brat dances i'm now dances with brat because she sent me that cool uh r2d2 3d night light thingy she feeds my star wars addictions Didn't do that part right. Go, let's go back and do it again. Okay. So when I was in this music group, I used to make hats for everybody, and I sent hats all over the world. Um, I liked, I did them, we called them doofy hats because people looked really doofy in them. They had tassels like this and ear flaps. And we would get on like in cam frog, everybody'd put their hats on and get on cam and we'd have a doofy hat party. I made Brat one in the darkest of blue, of course. I made, oh my gosh, I sent one to Blues Blaster. I sent one to Maggie. No, Maggie got the skull hat, which I'm going to show you guys those two. Bill. Um, the very first one I did. I was going to give it to Bill. Remember Bill 12 string? I talked about him before on the Montague thing. But uh, Bill said, no, give it to someone who deserves it. So I picked Sue Bird. And I ended up, the first one I gave her was a little bit too snug. So she asked for another one. And I was so nice. I made her another one, a bigger one. So she gave the smaller one to her child, childs, they had to fight over it. Um, man, I can't 
can't even remember now. Oh, I made Wardo one. I made Ron one. I made John one. And I think the dog ate that one. I made Jane one. I made Blondie one. <laughs> it was just too much fun. I just enjoy making things for people. Sometimes I made fingerless gloves to match. I made someone a crazy quilt. Just packed it up and sent it to them. So what else have I been watching? Oh, Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. I watch a lot of Chopped. I watch, started watching Elementary, but I kind of, I don't know, it's still hanging there on my list, but. Uh, Bizarre Foods with Andrew Zimmern. I watched a little bit of Anthony Bourdain. It's still kind of raw for me, but I did, I did make, I did manage to watch some. Uh, what else? What else? She says, if I had my Hulu up over there, I could tell you. See how fast that grew. And we're at 15 minutes. Okay, that's not bad. You know, I haven't, I talked for a few minutes. So, okay, you need the number of, okay, see these stitches? Like that's one, two, three, four, five, six. You need that to be a multiple of six. So what I've been doing is either 54, well, actually 60, 60 or 66. I think 66 makes a uh, teenager to adult and 60 will be the child sized and I figure if I give because I measured the children's heads okay <laughs> measured their heads but these are stretchy so but if one of them don't fit I'll just make them another one ain't no big deal So some people were asking, how did I learn to knit and crochet? When I was four years old, my grandma and my, I don't know who was babysitting me. I think my grandmother was babysitting me, my dad's mother. And we were at, were we at her house? Yeah, we were at. I can see the house plain as day. I'm not sure whose house it was. Was it my grandma's house or my Aunt Nancy's house? I think it was my grandma's house and my Aunt Nancy moved into it later. Okay. Aunt Nancy was at grandma's house. <laughs> this is how it went. Grandma was babysitting me. Aunt Nancy was there teaching my grandmother how to knit. I was watching and I wanted to do it, but I was a very shy child that I wouldn't like ask, you know, teach me how to do that. 
So I went to the desk and I got a couple of pencils and somehow I got a hold of a little bitty ball of pink yarn about this big around. And I went, my grandma had these accordion doors in her bedroom. And I got behind the door. They were on the living room couch. I got behind the door and I tried to figure it out. I tried to copy what they were doing. And they found me and said, come and sit on the couch and let's show you how to really do this. So... They sat me down on the couch, and with pink yarn, four years old, taught me how to knit. I was thrilled. I made a nose warmer. <laughs> it was so lumpy, and it was just hilarious. Okay. <laughs> Fast forward, I don't know. I don't remember knitting again until junior high. I'm sure I did. But in junior high, I had to take a bus from my house to Henning Grade School and then another bus from Henning Grade School to Bismarck. Bismarck Junior High. It was Bismarck Henning Junior High. Because the school in Henning was only an elementary school. And then in junior high we, and high school, we went to Bismarck. So I was on the bus forever and a day. Seventh and eighth grade. So I started knitting. And I loved it. But all I did was knit like back and forth and do a garter stitch and just did like faux blankets or something. But in high school, it really hit me. And I made, I figured out lace patterns and I made lace blankets. And I remember my mom getting so frustrated with me because you held it double, and man, it took a lot of yarn. <laughs> and I kept saying, I need more yarn, I need more yarn. <laughs> she had me make, so in payment, <laughs> she had me make her friend Doris a blanket. And I made my friend Laura, I made her mom a blanket, but it was just garter stitch back and forth, but uh, burgundy and cream. It was really pretty. Okay, let's stop and measure. Actually, what I'm going to do is count. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 27, 30, 32, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 40, 38, 40, 42, 44, 46, 48, 50, 52, 54, 56, 58. I need two more. Okay, for the next part, I do not follow the pattern because I don't see any need to, and you're going to see why. Okay, the pattern says... Place two shorts ends together and sew. Well, I'm not going to sew anything. I'm going to crochet them together with a slip stitch. And I guess this would be another good place to cut and go to an overhead shot 
cut. And we're back. Okay, we're going to slip stitch this together. Fold them together, make sure you got it like that and not twisted. And just go through there. You pull a loop through, catch the back loop, and the next loop, pull it through. And it's a slip stitch because you're not going to do this, you're just going to pull it through. I'm trying to stay in those loops. Now, if you want to sew it together, fine, sew it together. But this is how I'm doing it. This is the last. So it has sewn it together, and you turn it right side out for the next step. <laughs> I don't know. I may be too ambitious. Okay, turn it inside out. <laughs> uh -oh. Sometimes you have to untangle. Okay. Do you know what a half double crochet is? A half double crochet is where you yarn over, you insert you hook up a yarn, a loop, and you yarn over again, and you pull through all. So let's cut to the... Okay, to do a half double crochet, you yarn over, you insert into your first stitch, you pull it up, yarn over, pull through all three. So yarn over, insert through your stitch, pull through, over, pull through. So it's really easy and you can tell where your stitches are. Oops, I should have been crocheting over that. Oh well. Bam! Half double crochets all the way around. And we're back. <laughs> and they're off. You're going to crochet in every stitch around. And you hopefully have 60. Okay, wait a minute. One. Is that? Two, three, four, and I am crocheting over this tail to hide it. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 stitches, ah, 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 24, I could count in Spanish, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 
and six. Forty. <laughs> I wish I could count and only learn one to ten in French, and I can't even remember that now. My Spanish class was in with the French class. Didn't work out so well. Forty-one. Forty-two. Forty-three. Forty-four. Forty-five. Forty-six. Forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty, fifty-one. Ooh, we're going to be close. Fifty-one, fifty-two, fifty-three, fifty-four, fifty-five, fifty-six. This again, fifty six, fifty seven, fifty eight, fifty nine, and sixty right on the money. All right, join with a slip stitch. Okay, next part is tricky. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop this one, upload it. I'll be back. Okay, we're back for round two. Actually, round round three of the second half. <laughs> okay, forget, forget, forget that. So, during that lovely break, I made some chicken pad thai. And fed myself so I feel all good now. It's all right. Everything's fine. So this next bit is a bit tricky. So the instructions say half double crochet into the third loop. So you have the third loop is actually back here. Okay. This is where I got to go to the overhead. Okay. This is, if you, it's tricky. It's tricky at first, but once you get it, you'll understand. Okay. If you were going to do a regular crochet hook, a uh, crochet stitch, you would go under these two. But we are going to go behind those, and we're going to catch this one. So it's behind, it's right there. See how it makes those front loops come forward. So just kind of bring it towards you and it's right there. I say it's right there. And I don't know how else to explain it. But once you get it, you'll see that it's bringing those stitches to the front and this is why they're wanting you to do a half double crochet on that on these rounds instead of just a single crochet so you'll have that extra loop there to go into again clear as mud i hope so so do that 
twice and then you'll do it with a single crochet. There is a loop. Here's the front two loops, the top two loops. Back behind it, because you did a half double crochet, is another loop. That's what you're going to crochet into. You're doing half double crochets into the third loop. And what this does, it pushes this row, it pushes them forward so that you get this effect. So we're going to do that 60 times because that's how many stitches we have. So while I was eating my pad thai, I clicked on a Facebook video about a therapy horse. It's got to be somewhere in Europe, France or Italy or someplace like that. France, I think. And I boohooed like a baby. Yeah, I should know better like a baby. So it's all snot-tastic and all. <laughs> like sometimes I don't even care about things and sometimes the least little things make me cry. I don't like movies that make me cry. I don't like chick flicks. That's why I like movies with spaceships and or dinosaurs and or time travel and or Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Who is not my boyfriend because he is still alive. Although he is unattainable, so that kind of makes him qualified, but nah. Dead or fictional. That's how I prefer my boyfriends. Dead, fictional, and unattainable. Therefore unattainable. Dead, fictional, and therefore unattainable. Okay, let's get that straight. We are just crotcheting right around. Do this. Get some yarn. When I crochet, I keep the yarn to my left. When I knit, I keep it to the right. So I think the next needle, <coughs> excuse me, next needle craft video I'm going to do is knitting a skull cap skull. And you'll see why it's called that. Two actually, it's a, that's the shape of the hat and it's the motif on the hat. Scully hat. about doing this live stream but I couldn't I couldn't keep up with chat okay so made it around and slip stitch into that first chain chain one and repeat You're doing another row of half double crochets in the third loop 
forcing the top two loops to be to be like chains around that which whoever thought of this is a genius I never actually saw that technique before before I made these crowns I think it's pretty genius the uh, Hoopston Public Library gave me a new library card with a different number which is annoying but whatever and I had to go to the Champaign Public Library and give them my new number so I could be a reciprocal borrower there because it's the it's the the big library in the town that I work in and they are not part of the El Illinois Heartland system so I got a couple of new books actually they're propping up my camera right now so I can't show you One is a crochet blanket book because I still have way too much yarn. I, I have way too much acrylic yarn from before, not the new good stuff that I bought. And I'm almost done with my colorful squares blanket. So when I get that done, I'm going to have all these extra yarns. So I thought, well, what if I find another blanket pattern that I like and I crochet it this time? We'll see. We shall see. There's one that looks like a big doily that I like a lot, but that wouldn't use up a bunch of different colors. to the end of this round now I'm going to join now I'm going to do the same type the same technique where I'm going into that third loop but you only do a single crochet this time you do not yarn over first you just single crochet And that sets up for the very last round. So we're all, you know, not decades away, but <laughs> minutes away from the last round. Let's see. Now we have that pushes that last row down. So you have three, the three. They look like chain chains. Usually when I'm knitting and crocheting, I'm either halfway watching a TV show, more listening to it, or listening to books on tape. I'm listening to books on tape. Listen to me audiobooks uh, Lost City of the Monkey God by Douglas Preston it's about an ancient city 
rediscovered in Honduras. It is nonfiction and I am digging it. Digging it, I say. Those ancient cultures are fascinating to me. The Mayan, the Aztec. A little bit terrifying, the human sacrifices and such, but the their buildings and their it's just wild how the pyramids are like everywhere. They're not exactly all the same pyramids, but that basic shape for building for temples or whatever, it's like everywhere. It's kind of weird. I don't have the patience to be like a true archaeologist or anything. I can't even... Can't even I can't go to the jungle. I know that I hate the jungle. I've never been there, but I hate it. I know I do. I'd be better off. Let's say Canada, <laughs> hunting dinosaur bones in Canada. But you got to do that in the summer when it's hot and there's mosquitoes. So no. I'll just read books about them and watch videos and such. I do love a good fossil, though. Okay, we're almost at the end of this round. Ready for the next and last step. Okay. Chain one, single crochet through both loops this time. Just like a normal single crochet. Yarn over, skip two. In the third loop, third stitch, you make two double crochets, two triple crochets, then chain four, one, two, three, four, and you make a pico, which is, makes that little bobbly thing. Then you make two triple crochets. You're still in the same stitch. And two double crochets. So you have a total of eight stitches in that one stitch. Then you, that's right there. Then you skip two. You skip one, two, and you single crochet in the next. And it has made this shell with a pico at the top. Then you're going to double crochet, which is when you put the yarn over one time, skip two stitches. In the next stitch, you draw it through. You crochet pull through twice. That's a double. You make two double crochets and two triple crochets. You make a pico of four chain. You're going in right. I don't know how to show this. I will, after I get this one done, I will cut to the overhead. So cut, and we're back. Okay, last part. Chain one, single crochet right there. Okay, double crochet in the third. One, two, three. You're going to make two 
double crochets. Then you yarn over twice for a triple crochet. One, two, three. Yarn over twice for a triple crochet. One, two, three. Now you're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. In the last triple crochet you made, you're going to go in like that and do a slip stitch. And it makes that nice pico. Then you're going to two triple crochet in the same hole. Same stitch. Stitch, not hole. Then two double crochet. So there's a total of eight stitches in the one stitch. Then you skip one, two, and in the third one you single crochet. Makes that thing. We'll do it one more time. Skip two. In the third stitch, you two double crochet. Two triple crochet. Chain four. slip stitch in the top of that last triple. Do two more triples. And two more doubles. Skip two, single crochet. And carry on all the way around. One, two, three. So I should come out with ten of these point things because I had sixty stitches around. When I was teaching my granddaughter to crochet, the hardest part, I think, was getting her to wrap the yarn to control the tension. Once she got that part, she really sped like right through it. would help if I maybe if I brought that yarn up to my lap I wouldn't have to keep doing this okay so here's the thing I'm gonna see if it'll just pull out of there it's not as entertaining but <laughs> it's quicker for me than stopping and pulling and stopping I've got to get, I've got to get Margie's Moon Journal moon, uh, mailed to her, and Deb gets, given her the tags from Wednesday's video, and I got to get Christiana's book back to her. So when I'm done with this, that is what I'm doing. I am packing those things up, and we're going to the post office. I am not having that on my head anymore, hanging over me. Mail me, mail me. Okay. 
Let's see if the yarn's going to cooperate now. This is the child size. I'm gonna I'm gonna estimate maybe adding at the very most 15 minutes extra for an adult size. The band, this part, you start with more stitches and you have to make it longer. So therefore there's more stitches around. But it you can tell it goes really quick, so I'm going to guess 15 minutes extra for an adult. Just looked over them at 19 minutes on this section. So I'm going to say an hour if I was not talking and, you know, holding things up to the camera like that. And I had something good on the TV. And I didn't have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I, I rarely sit for a whole hour at a time. It's, number one, you get stiff and sore when you're owed like me. But yeah, there are things like bathroom breaks and getting a soda and checking the mail. And... But I'm really glad I got these done. I might put some sequins on them. But I don't know. these The children that these ones are for... I don't trust them. I don't trust them not to pull sequins off. You know? <laughs> How could I? I could sew them on and put like a drop of glue or something on it so they can't pull it off. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, got one more. See that right there? The last one. should always take your knitting or your crochet with you wherever you have to go somewhere and wait. Ta-da! We made this together. Actually only took about 50 minutes, 55 minutes, let's say an hour. Give yourself an hour once you, once you get it memorized. I mean, I've memorized this pattern right away. And now I've made two, four, six, seven. I made seven of them. I should have been wearing mine. I'll be right back. This is the one I made when I went to Sharon's house to eat. Everybody was just amazed, just amazed that I made this in that little bit of time. So, where's my sign? Where'd my sign go? 
I found it. Please subscribe. I need friends. So not right away, but someday we'll do the <sighs> scully hat. <laughs> It's a knitting, and it's it's stranded knitting, so I'll be using, like, both fingers going like this and such. But anyway. Come back. I got stuff. I still got all that journaling stuff in there. And we'll, we'll get back to journaling. Of course we will. Of course we will. Bye.